Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. This is the Ramble, and we go from night now until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, we got a guest uh, for us uh, to uh, be part of our uh, uh, part of our show, and we started off usually this way. Okay, here's a little thing we like to do: is we like to call this guy ahead of time because when he answers, the, you start recording ahead of time because when he answers, he answers in a funny way. So. We're calling Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Mm-hmm. There we go. Oh. Will he answer? Oh. I am walking on air because I just booked a role in Jonestown, the musical, a whimsical romp through the jungles of Guyana in the late 70s. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Robert Preston Jr. is <laughs> Jim Jones. Going to Joe's Towns. That starts with J, which rhymes with K, which stands for Kool Aid. Stands for Kool Aid. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe's Town, man. He's a what? He's a what? He's a Joe's Town, man. Oh, oh okay. boy. You're crazy. You're we'll nuts. be playing the Schenectady Theater January 1st through January 2nd when we close. You're nuts. That'll be a wonderful theatrical affair. Oh, thank you very much. You're the riff master. I'm riffing, baby. I can't stop. I just can't stop riffing. I took an ODA riff pills. Vitamin R. This is uh, Stephen Pearl, who recently left California. Yep, and, to and, rising rents. And so he can't uh, he can't complain about politics in California. Uh, yeah. But uh, a few days ago, uh, he had some elections in Nevada, and yep. a friend of mine won election mm-hmm. to the uh, state assembly. Uh, there, How about uh, that? That's uh, good. Yeah, yeah. His name was Dennis Hoff. He was the owner of the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, I say ah. what was because he died. <laughs> we elected a dead guy, just like you, when they voted you, for Sherman Block you, after he died in L.A. You elected I love a, when dead people win. You elected a dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put it this way. You know, I don't think he'll give a shit about the complaints. Either that or he'll get more done than any other politician. That's true, yeah, that's right. Yeah. He, he hardly says anything, but boy, what he's getting done. No, but he went, like he, he, uh, he ran as a Republican, which, of course, daunts me. Uh, uh-huh. But he uh, ran as a Republican, and so the Republican Party gets to give somebody the job. Uh-huh. But he, he won it, and he won it overwhelmingly by something like 7,000 votes, and I think there were like, you know, 10,000 cast, and that was it. Oh, it was a local legend. Even in death, we still love him. Yeah, still love him. So anyway... uh, (laughs) uh, Wasn't he very conservative and right-wing? That's what I heard, uh, anyway. Yes, I don't know. You know, I I hadn't talked to Dennis in about a year or so, uh and uh, I never talked politics with him, and he never talked politics you know to him the only time he did anything politically was uh uh when he wanted to publicize the ranch he was very much into Uh publicizing himself Uh, yeah but uh roger stone who was a terrible republican operative uh Uh referred to him as the trump of pahrump <laughs> the Trump of Pahrump. I like that. Yeah, the Trump. I of vote for him just for that. Yeah, the Trump of Pahrump. So, anyway, but you were you weren't able to vote because uh, you're too new to the state, right? Too new to the state. I did register last week, but it wasn't in time. So uh, look out next election. I'll vote then, but I couldn't. I could only observe this time. Yeah. But uh, you know, it, it went the way it went, and uh, whatever. Yeah. What you can't. Not gonna not gonna stop me from getting a haircut today. I'll tell you that one. Well, you had to. You know, you had to go uh, move somewhere, and it wasn't in time to be able to vote under their rules. So you're you probably could have gone back to California and voted. Yeah. Sure, I'd like to drive a car that was just repaired for 10 hours just to, to vote. Sure, no, no, no. Not this time. I missed out this one. I'm sorry, but uh, the next one I'll be right there. I'll be first in line. Well, let's see. It takes you how long to get to San Francisco from... 
to drive there from Las here Vegas. would be about ten hours. Really? Is that, hours, is, that, like that. is that eight all? hours? Maybe eight and a half. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. It's like in January, I have a gig with Carl Lebeau in Arizona, so that's a four-hour drive each way. So yeah. that's like half of that. So yeah. mathematically speaking, yeah. So uh, it it takes you that long to get to Arizona? Well, wherever the place is in Arizona, oh, oh that's you're how going. Long it takes. You, yeah, I don't know where the yeah, border yeah. is, but it's probably yeah, you, you're, over the border. You're going. You're going uh, east, right? When you do that, uh, no, yep, that's what they tell me. Uh, maybe down a little bit or something. I can't. I'm trying to remember. Nevada's wedged in there next to. <laughs> we're, we're we're there somewhere, so I don't know. Kind of almost like a triangle. Yeah. How do you how do you like oh. Vegas? How do you like living in Las Vegas? I like it. I've been working. I just did a week at Jokesters, and I'm headlining there at another uh, on the 19th through the 25th. And I've been opening for Carl Lebeau at his midnight shows and having fun. And I'm working more in a week here than I did in a year in San Francisco. Not that I don't miss San Francisco. I, I miss the terrain and the beautiful scenery and all that. And are you, but, get, are you uh, getting? I'm, are I'm you, having a lot of fun here, man. I'm working. Are, so you, gonna, I'm a good are you getting paid for all of that? Yo, yes, most of it. Okay, good. Well, that's, yep, that's yep, more yep, than happens yeah. in San Francisco. I mean, your your career was. Uh, what career? What career? <laughs> it's been eighty-seven. <laughs> and here you're now. You're working every night and things like that. And it's... When I want, yeah. I don't want. I don't want to work every night. I like being home with the cats and the weed and the TV. But uh, you know, I'm still, I like working too. So it's it's fun. You know, my car's where I got my car back, and I got my Medicaid card, and I went to the dentist yesterday, and I'm going to work on my crown now. So uh. soon I'll have my Wink Martin down smile back, and now I'm mobile again. So yeah. things are what, looking up. What happened? Uh, you know. Uh, what happens with uh, uh, like a club like Jokesters? Is that a big club or is that just like a small comedy club? It's, it's a nice room. It fits a few hundred, and they have shows there, and they have comedy seven nights a week at ten thirty, and uh, all kinds of stuff. So I don't know what a big room. Is. I know they they fill it, so and it's uh, it's fun. Yeah. So I guess it's a big room. So as far as I'm concerned, then they paid me. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a big, bigly, hugely room. It'd be nice. Be, full of fun. Be nice if you got a job at one of the hotels. You know. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind like a residency even in a small place. You know, pays the bills and shit. I'm having fun. Yeah. Who could ask for more? You know, yeah. Carla Bo got a nice little residency at the Tropicana. There's weekend midnight shows, which are kicking ass. Bobby, funny as Bobby Slayton for a while had a residency there. And I'm trying to remember where. Yeah, he was at Hooters, I think, at some club in Hooters. So uh, yeah, he was there yeah. for all the Robert Duchesne that have been going on for a while. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a steady, it's a steady gig, you know. And if I live here, I don't have to. I just go back home, you know, every night. Well, I mean, a theater in Branson. No, my friend Penn Gillette and Teller years ago did a res started a residency at the Rio, and uh -huh. uh, that has remained. It kept happening for 15, 20 years. I can't remember how long sure. it is now, and. They like it because, uh, uh, you know, they, they do their show and they go home. There you go. <laughs> you, know? And you know what I like about Vegas is, is, as opposed to L.A. and other places, they're hiring older guys who've been doing it a while. I see a lot of guys my age, maybe a couple years younger, a couple years older. I see a lot of gray-haired comedians who are kicking ass, so that makes me feel good. Why is that? I mean, why? Is it because the audiences are older? I don't know. There, I've seen people in the audience who probably weren't born when I started, but there's also older people. It's a cross-section. You know, most people are visitors here. Let's go to Vegas for the weekend and get drunk and gamble and we'll see a comedy show or whatever. And uh, I don't know, but I see guys my age and a little older, a little younger working steadily, so that makes me feel good. You don't see that too much in L.A. or New York, or they want younger people, and I can see that. You know, They want younger faces, but uh, us old-timers are uh, working pretty steadily out here. I'll tell you, uh, i I got to say something about uh, old timers and show business. Uh, for instance, if you're a writer in Hollywood, you're you're washed up mm -hmm. at like 40, 45. Oh, sure. The gray list, man. Yeah. If you're 30, you're pretty much washed up. Yeah, it's because they have some idea. And, and I uh, that always bothered me because I can't couldn't figure out where being funny had an age attached to it. And especially yep. maybe they say, well, we you know, we don't want you because you're older and what will our audiences think? But they don't see a writer, you know. Yeah. Uh, a writer exactly. could be eighty years old, and but they go, oh no, but he's not writing to to a young voice. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Like his words seem older. You know, his, his words are wrinkled. Let's uh, get a younger and writer. I don't know. You know. I mean, maybe I, this is where I'm old fashioned. To me, funny is funny. Exactly, exactly. That's all funny is funny. That's the bottom line. But I, uh, I can listen. Unfortunately, the people in charge don't feel that way. I listen. I can listen to comedy. Good example: Jack Benny radio shows that was done before uh -huh. I was born. 
And I can laugh at it because it's funny. Exactly. And these were a bunch of old guys writing this shit. Okay. Uh -huh. You know, it is a, it's a terrible gray wall they've created. And, and so mm -hmm. it's interesting that you say that Vegas doesn't have that gray wall. And I'm trying to figure out why. Maybe because they're just not trying to get young people into their casinos. I don't know. I don't know how it works, but uh, I guess young people are busy taking Oxycontin and doing the peppermint twist in the street. I don't know, but uh, I just see, from what I see, it's just older guys like me are working here pretty steadily, so I like that. Yeah. And they're starting to work me a bit, so, uh, you know, I want to try some other clubs, too, and see who likes me, who doesn't, whatever, you know, I just work as much as I can without working too much, and, uh, you know. A few years right here. A few years ago, my my late friend Steve took me down to the Friars Club for not a roast, but a just a Friars I don't know tribute or something to somebody, and a bunch of the oldest comics you've ever seen in your life got up to do their stuff, and it was maybe the funniest comedy show I've ever been to in my life. There you go. I mean, these, the pros. yeah. I mean, uh, these guys were they they had done it for so long, their timing was impeccable. Uh huh. Sure. You know? uh, and the the jokes were, I mean, some of the dirtiest shit you ever heard in your life. You know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it was it was really amazing. It was really amazing. Uh, and well. and so therefore, I said to myself. Well, you know, there's really no age limit on being funny, and yet, exactly, and yet, there is an age limit in the business. You know? Exactly. Yep. Uh, and and so, therefore, Stephen Pearl, how old are you now, Stephen? I'm on the 16th. I will be 63. <laughs> 63 years old. Can't believe it. How, yeah. the, fuck, how the fuck did that how happen? Did the fuck, <laughs> I thought it would stop at 26 well, and stay there for What a while. happened? How that happened is you kept breathing. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Kept being for sixty-three I, I, years. I love, it, I love it when they they do a TV show and the, somebody uh, gets up and they say, "And how old are you?" And they go, "Well, I'm seventy-three." And the audience applauds. And, and, <laughs> That's for not dying. Uh, I'd get a standing ovation at seventy-eight. You know. Oh, and, there you go. <laughs> and, and, oh, you know. And I'm I'm thinking, yeah. what the fuck did they do? They did nothing. They just simply they did didn't stop breathing. Exactly, their heart kept beating, and you get applause for that. Thank and, you. And then, of course, the host will then say something really stupid, like, "Oh, you're seventy-eight years young." Exactly. No, years young. you're seventy-eight really many old years. Okay, fucker. Yeah. I just happen to keep breathing. Like everybody says, yeah. "To what do you owe your longevity, Alex?" And I go, "I don't know. I didn't die. Uh, <laughs> you not know. die." I go, here's to another 78. Yeah, like that's going to fucking happen. Yeah, my, my, so far, my my great claim to fame is I've kept breathing. You know, I mean, there you I, go. I find that Me stupid. Too. I find that really stupid. But I find just as ridiculously stupid the fact that you're dismissed. You know? Yep. I mean, every yep. time I get a hold of somebody in this business and say, hey, you know, I'd like to get back and do a little, little radio shows and things like that. They go, oh, uh -huh. uh, nice to talk to you. You know, boy, he's a, yeah. real, he's a real pro. You know what? Well, yeah. I mean, I did a. I, I wondered if I still had my chops at my age. You know, so I this friend of mine, uh, Walter Sterling, uh, asked me to do a show on uh, on on a network of fifty five stations on a Sunday night because he wanted to take the night off and he wanted me to take over for him. Yep. So I really was panicked about this. I didn't know after five yep. years of not doing a show. Uh, on on radio, if I if I still had it in me, uh, and um, I went down there and I was terrific. I was just terrific, you know. Like riding the bicycle, you don't forget. You yeah, know, like, like, yeah. Get back right on the riff train. And I and I sent the file to a lot of different radio people to see, you know, if there was any interest. I didn't even hear anything back. Okay. Yeah. They look at age. They go, "Oh, forget it." Yeah. Yeah. That's their whole. But he's, their whole but he's thing. really good. He's a pro. Wow, we look at the age. Forget it. Yeah, and it's radio, by the way. You know, my voice. Yeah, has well, it doesn't matter. They, my, can, they can hear. They can hear seventy-eight. My, they, forget it. You can't hear seventy. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't hear seventy-eight. in My voice. I know. Most people exactly, say. Exactly. I know it at all. You, you say it's probably never changed since you knew me in San Francisco. Sounds the same. Sounds the same. No, sounds the same from New York, man. Shit. Yeah. 
it from New York? Well, I think it's changed a little bit from New York. I've it heard. sounds the same as when you had spiral conjunctivitis in late 73. See, I was listening. Wait, you you know you remember me when I had that conjunctivitis attack? Yep, you said you said you had spiral conjunctivitis and you wouldn't be driving for a while. Spiral? That was in late nineteen seventy three. Y- yes, it was. What, what happened was I got conjunctivitis. Who knows how I got <clears throat> conjunctivitis? I got it right. So mm-hmm. I just I just let it go. I didn't know what it was. I'd never had it before. It's just my eyes were hurting and burning. Right. Uh-huh. So I. Uh, <laughs> I keep going, and finally, uh, one day, a couple of days in, uh, I bump into a kid, like a toddler. No, <laughs> get in trouble. And I went, I think I better see an eye doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah if I'm bumping into, bump into a toddler. If I'm bumping into toddlers, you know, it's time for me to go. So I went to a doctor, and he said, oh, well, we can take care of that. That's easy to take care of. And I said, how? Oh, we just put uh, nit- what is it? The nitric acid or something acid in your eyes. Oh, lovely! That'd be and fun. I go, well, that's uh, uh, silver nit- oh. uh, silver nitrate. I think it was. We Ouch. put we put it in your eyes, and uh, that'll that'll cure it. And I went, well, doesn't that hurt? They said, not after we deaden the eyeball. And he puts these oh. these drops in to deaden the eyeball, and I the stuff goes in there, and I can feel it like gurgling, right? Oh, 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 and uh, I, got, I, I went home, and my conjunctivitis was gone. That's all it took, you know. Oh man, what is one little visit? How about that? One little, one little simple visit. But meanwhile, yeah. I was going around blind for days. I was, I was almost wearing like patches over my eyes. I would look terrible. It was horrible. Uh-huh. So you Yikes. remember me having that and talking about it on the radio? Sure, WPLJ. I what? believe. Wow. Wow. How about that? Son of a bitch. I remember stuff. I remember when, when the whole chili thing happened with Salvador Allende. We were talking about that on the air. And I remember those days. I remember hearing Jack Benny passed away from your show the day after Christmas, 1974. You mentioned Jack Benny really? passed away. Oh, that's You funny. know, you're right. He did die. He died, I think, on Christmas. Yeah, the day after, actually. Yeah. So, I remember hearing that. How how did, out how, of my life for a very long time. See, but. I mean, this is funny because there are people like you who remember things. I don't remember talking about Jack Benny dying, but I pro- would probably have done it if he had died. Yep. Uh, and uh, that was what year? That was 74. The day after Christmas of 74, yeah. I remember when you mentioned that uh, Candy Darling had died, the Warhol star. I remember hearing that on the radio. Well, Candy Darling, who was one of the... Uh, a, a Warhol superstars, I guess you could call uh, her, and I say her. Uh, he, he, it was he. It, it, Candy was a guy, but I she always, had eyebrows, and he was a she. The, well, the thing was, she was gorgeous, and uh-huh. I got to know Candy. And when she would walk into a room, I would kiss her hello, you know, because uh-huh. she demanded that respect. Okay. Because yep. number one, she pulled it off so well, <laughs> and uh, when she was dying, she asked me to come videotape her on her deathbed, and oh. I and I just couldn't Thanks. do it. I just couldn't uh. bring myself to do it. Uh, but I wish I had. You know, uh, uh, it, 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 what's funny, and and, and you'll enjoy this. Uh, there are three crossdressers. Well, that's what we'll call them for the time. Mentioned in Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild Side. Uh, okay. They are Candy Darling. He mentions uh-huh. Candy. Jackie Curtis. And Holly, uh-huh. and Holly Woodlawn. Ah. Uh-huh. And I knew, all th- I knew all three of them. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Candy probably more than the rest, although I knew... Uh, 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 Jackie and and uh, um, uh, Holly Woodlawn very uh, quite well. They used to be on my shows a lot. And the thing is that what what was interesting is they were three different types of cross dressers. Candy, uh, oh, I know. Candy, uh, it was like Candy admired women and loved women and dressed go- really well, gorgeously, and came off as a woman. Okay, well, earned your respect as a woman. On the other hand, going to the complete opposite end of that was Jack, Jackie Curtis, who would wear female clothing but have a five-day growth. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and I just always wondered why. <laughs> you know, yeah. it just it just it never made any sense to me. I mean, you know. And then there was Holly Woodlawn who was doing a cartoon character of a woman. Uh, and and I often wondered if if some of that wasn't not out of Candy Darling, but out of Jackie and out of Holly, wasn't a certain hatred for women. But apparently yeah. they didn't have a hatred for women because if you ever wanted to get laid, become a cross-dresser. <laughs> Holly Woodlawn was banging women left and right, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, those were the three, and they were all in Walk on the Wild Side. The other one was uh, who Joe D'Alessandro has mentioned. He's a guy who. Oh, that's a it. little Joe, yeah. But uh, all, uh, those those three people, I knew every one of them. You know. How about that? You've had quite a colorful array of characters in your life. It, well, they, those were the most colorful. They were amazing. There you go. Just amazing. Uh, do you remember oh, those? Man. You remember those days? I guess you do. You know. I remember I wasn't really part of that scene, but I remember what was going on and then all the Andy Warhol and the Campbell soup can and all that stuff. Yeah. Did did I ever talk did I ever talk about going to Max's Kansas City and things like that where You must have. I don't quite remember anything yeah. about that at the moment, but I'm sure you did talk about that whole scene and everything. Yeah. My wife was working there. My current wife was working there at the time, but I don't remember her. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Uh, as, as a waitress. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, uh, you know who uh, you know who was a waitress there when I was going to uh, Max's Kansas City? Uh, uh, Peggy De- Cass, just a wild yeah. guess. Deborah Harry. Oh yeah, she was a waitress. She was a Playboy bunny at one time, I think too. Was she really? Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe I saw a picture of her with the bunny ears from the sixties sometime. But no, she was a waitress at Max's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. How about that? You got Max to is, somewhere. For people who don't know, Max's Kansas City was what a bar and eatery. Okay. Yeah, and all the Warhol crowd would hang out there. That was, you know, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, I would hang out there with them, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, it, you know, I only met Andy once though. A- Andy never, uh-huh. ne- Andy never showed up at Max's, but everybody else did. You know, his entire yeah, sure. crowd. What he called his little Hollywood. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I met up with Andy once at a party. And actually engaged him in conversation. Oh, really? He spoke, huh? Yes, yes. But yeah, hey. very shy guy. That's why he never. Yeah, spoke. I've heard. I've heard. He's he's very, like very shy. Uh, and I, to this day, think one of the most brilliant American artists. But nobody understands why. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and and I often try to say that the best description I ever heard of Andy Warhol as an artist that the biggest work of art that Andy Warhol ever created was Andy Warhol. It was Andy Warhol, sure. He but must be the art. He did an ad for Pioneer Stereos. And somebody said, oh, that, really? said that, was the, <laughs> uh, that was the ultimate Andy Warhol work of art because he was the center of attention in the ad. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but that he, everything he created around him really pointed back to him. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, when he created his his, his version of Hollywood, uh, again, it was like he recreated Hollywood in his own image, and he started with silent films and worked his way up uh-huh. to talkies and then wound up with 3D, That's you know. Uh. Uh, <laughs> but I think one of America's most brilliant artists. He was just uh-huh. m- amazing what he did. And everybody... Everybody used to love to joke about him, but his art was very pervasive. Everybody saw it everywhere. Everybody, everybody knows the Campbell soup can. Sure, sure. He turned the soup can into art. Yeah. Only a genius can do that, my friend. So, how did I? How did I uh, uh, affect your your future growth as an entertainer? Did I have anything to do with it? Oh, I I, I dug listening to you because you were outside the box and you weren't of the norm. And uh, you know they talk about Howard Stern, but you were doing his way first. And uh, it helped. And then when I started doing your show, it's like, oh, man, this is the guy I used to listen to. This is cool. It was like being friends with Johnny Winter or something like that. Somebody I grew up listening to. <clears throat> you, excuse me, and enjoying. And then, then we're friends and we're working together. I go, this is pretty cool. I don't think you've ever told me this, really. Well, I've always loved you, man. I always have. No, I mean, I don't think you've really told me about listening to me, when, you know, and, and you remember stuff I don't. 
You know. Oh, sure, I remember back in the, and I heard, I think I started listening, I don't remember you on AM, but I remember when you switched to FM, I think it was PLJ or something, yeah. which was, I just changed from WABC FM to WPLJ, and I started listening to you at night, and I thought it was cool, yeah. in 72 or 73, and then I went to school in Ohio in 73, when I came home for holidays, I turned you on, well, and there funny, you are. It's funny that you, like remember the, that you remember the conjunctivitis, because I do too, since I forget a lot of things, but I remember every illness I've ever had. You know, so yeah, <laughs> me anyway, too. Hey, I had impetigo when I was young. I remember all of it. Yeah, hey, listen, it's, it's we've run out of time already. Big star, uh, just when we're getting into fun diseases. Okay, big, well, big, next time. big star in Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. And he's, come see me. I'm changing my name to Jackie Star with four <laughs> R's and a seven, just to be different. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Come to Vegas. See me. I'm all over the place. I love you. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And here we are. Thank you very much, Stephen. We always enjoy our little conversations with Mr. Pearl and his pearls of wisdom. Uh, I guess that's the way we put it. Uh, I'm going to do a few things here to get everything going. Bring up on my Skype here. Open it up just in case anybody wants to call. Okay. All righty. Um, uh, a, a lot of action on <laughs> strange on my Facebook page. I was testing to see if I could put up a, 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 a news clip of the press conference from yesterday and see if it got flagged by Facebook or got flagged by uh, YouTube. And the uh, truth of the matter was, uh, it wasn't uh, flagged by uh, YouTube or uh, or Facebook, but on Facebook, it got over 325 views in under two hours, which is better than I do with any other videos I put up. And this, all this was, was just the press conference from yesterday, which I think most people have seen. And the reason I was testing is because I thought I might play it tonight, but I don't know if I will or I won't. But it was the most embarrassing press conference any president has ever held in the history of the this republic. Uh, did they? Hold, I wonder. Did, they, did Washington hold press conferences? Did Jefferson uh, hold press conferences? Madison, Lincoln, did Theodore Roosevelt hold press conferences? I don't know. When did the concept of press conferences start? Maybe somebody can look that up. Anyway, our lines are open, so I'm sitting here just waiting for somebody to call me, and um, it may as well be you. If you want to find out how to call this program, as you may have a want to do it, go over to gabnet.net. On the right-hand side of the page, a complete tutorial, very short, very fast, very simple, on how you can get Skype, if you have Skype, also how you can call our program. There's even a button there that once you uh, have Skype on, will uh, will call us. So, you know, uh, be our guest. Be our guest. Ladies and gentlemen, our first caller of the evening, Phil Meyer. I was not going to be here tonight. I know. That's uh, that's why I was surprised you were. Yeah. You didn't go to the play? No, he, here's what happened. <laughs> Very silly. So I get a call from girlfriend today, and she says, you know, with this thing we, I just paid $85 a ticket for, they have a two-drink minimum? I said, yeah. well, that sucks. I mean, if you're paying 85 bucks, you shouldn't have to be uh, given a, a two-drink minimum. I said, you really should call the place and see if that two-drink minimum is waived if you paid $85 for a ticket. And um, well, you're not listening to me. You're too busy yeah, adjusting I'm, I'm, I'm your listening, picture. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, so I said, you, well, you, should, you should call them and, and see if, if there is a two-drink minimum on this deal. So she calls them, and they said, oh, well, the show closed last week. So what happened to the uh, 170 bucks? Well, supposedly she got the money back, and it was returned, but she didn't know it. It was returned to her, uh, her credit card. But they, I guess, closed the show down prematurely last week. And uh, didn't matter to get uh, get a hold of people or let people. There was no way to let, I guess, let people know that the show had been canceled. So what show was this? This was uh, a thing called, I don't know, the Trump something or another. It was a satirical show about Trump. All right. Should have been closed. 
<laughs> no, no, you don't know. It may have been a very positive show about Trump. You have no idea. If it's satirical, I doubt it was positive. You well, know. well, why? Why would that be? You couldn't. Uh, you couldn't do a satire of Trump and be well. You no matter what you would do in satire would not necessarily be positive towards somebody. It would be a cartoon character you would create, but it could be a very positive show. You don't know. I don't know. I'll never see it. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, nice to have you here on a Thursday. Yeah, so here I am, you know, what the hell. And then I called up Jack and I said, well, if you really want to do my, you had your heart set on doing my show tonight, you're welcome to do it. And he says, ah, I had a bad night last night, so uh, if you want to do, do it, just do it, you know. So I said, okay, I'm back on doing the show, so yeah. here, I, here I am. Well, uh, yeah. welcome and, back. And who just called us on the phone? This is Doug. Hi, How you doing? Hi, Doug. You just couldn't bear not to call this show, too, huh? Well, I didn't want, you know, I called Damien. I didn't want to offend you by not calling you. Well, that wouldn't you have, don't wouldn't, want me to wouldn't, call you. It wouldn't anyway. have, you think that would offend me? No, not really. I mean, it offends me you called. I mean, that, you know. <laughs> well, I, I figured last time went pretty good, so I'll just, you know, try to. Oh, well, be normal, yeah. and well, I shouldn't say be normal. I'll behave. So yeah. anyway, but yeah. I hope all is well with you. I hope you're getting the Thanksgiving spirit. Just ordered a big turkey and all that. And I, I've been told I got to cook. So yeah, well, I, 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 I uh, we get the turkey every year, and she cooks, and I, I can make a good turkey. I'm great at making turkey, but she'll never know because she'll never let me. Yeah, hmm. you know. Oh, is that the you way make, you do a turkey? Eat, you get, you got any visitors coming over, or is it just you and No, I've, and I've got, uh, well, so far, uh, Jack Garfine, the, the director, and his lovely lady, uh, Natalia, are yeah. coming over, so that will be nice. And uh, we've invited a few other people, but, uh, you know, we, we don't know about them yet, but, you know, it'd be nice if they came. Yeah, I'm cooking for about 10 people and ordered about like an 18 to 20 pound turkey there. So I'm deciding whether to cook it on the the grill there or to fry it. Never fried a turkey before and don't have a fryer, but well, it, I've had I, fried turkey before I would, and it's I, really I, good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it unless you get one of those fryers that's made specifically for it. Otherwise, you're flirting with oh, danger, yeah, yeah. you know. I'd have to get one of those. There's no way I can do it at home with what I have. Yeah. But I've, I, I, what we did is we took some turkey parts and we deep fried them to see how that would go and how it would taste. And it was phenomenal. Just that, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, because yeah. what it does is the, is the frying of it seals in the juices. And so you've got a very moist turkey. And Did you brine your turkey before frying it? No, we were just we were just testing frying it. So we okay. got some turkey pieces. We got I think uh, some breasts and some, you know, drumsticks and things like that, and just tried it to see if you know how it would taste. And it tastes that even that just tastes phenomenal. Now, Alex, did you use one of those peanut oil fryers where you dip the things into? Yeah, uh, yeah, we had a fryer, it, but we didn't have, if you're going to do a turkey, you've got to get one of the turkey fryers, and they're not that expensive. They're like about 40, 50 bucks or something like that. It's the size of them, right? Y well, it's, it's the, the oil that's expensive. Well, what it is, it's the way they're built, too. Uh, you yeah. put the, yeah, you're going to, because you, what, are you going to save the oil for next year? You know? <laughs> Uh, no. uh, I mean, if you did it all the time, you could kind of put this, the, uh, uh, it, you know, the oil aside. That would be fine. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, it, 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 the, the thing is that these, uh, these uh, fryers for the turkeys have, uh, number one, are big enough to put a turkey in there. And um, then they've got a basket, but they've got an edge thing so that you can actually lift the thing out of there. Uh, without, uh, without, ha you know, it, it, uh, it's easy, to, easy to use, easy to manipulate the turkey and stuff like that. So you might look into that if you're interested, but if not, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. But I mean, I definitely suggest anybody cooking a turkey out there, either they fry it or cook it in the oven, brine it before, you know, brine it like an hour for every pound that it is. All you need is simple water and salt. Or you can go with the why, why should you know, we brine uh, it? lemons and stuff like that. Why, you know, why, why in particular should we brine it? 
Uh, it, it, it breaks down the texture of the meat and makes it more tender. It makes it more tender, or does it make it yeah. kind of mealy? You know, no, I mean, no, no, no. It makes it it makes it more tender. It's uh, uh, it, it's just since I've been doing it, 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 it's sort of like wow, this is a really good bird right here. But as I said, it's usually about an hour pound. You, you can look at different brine recipes, but as I said, pretty much all you need is really water well, uh, and speak, salt. Speaking That's all of you that, really need, but people add yeah. apple juice or yeah. other fruit and stuff like that Spe- to it. Speaking of that, we've been joined by Brian. I mean Brian. Uh, <laughs> Kid, yeah, is that Vernon? By the way, uh, what? Yeah. It sounds like Vernon. Is that who that is? No, no, it's Doug Dupree. Doug Dupree. Yeah. Um, before your time. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, before your time. <laughs> He's just a mere <laughs> child, Doug. So, what have you been doing Thank with you. your life, Doug? Still taking pictures, I assume. Yeah, I'm doing the photography thing and uh, got some shows coming up. Uh, the reason I'm on the road and why I was able to contact you is I had to go pick up some pictures at a gallery I didn't show. And so it was far enough away from home, so I'm staying on the road and plan to take some pictures on the way home tomorrow. And, uh, and you know, certain plans for 2019 mm-hmm. uh, got turned down at a gallery up there in New York there. Um, uh, which nothing new. That's part of the deal. You can get turned down. You get accepted. But like uh, this one particular gallery is like, you know what? Screw you. I'm not. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm getting tired of sending y'all thirty five, forty five dollars for registration, and y'all have to say like, oh no. And then it seems like everybody that they select are like locals. <laughs> I don't understand why you got to pay uh, to be in a contest. No, he's not being. He's not in a contest. He he uh, wants to be shown in a well, gallery no, it, it, in New York. Well, no, technically feels right. It is a contest. You submit your pictures. You give like a fee. The judges go through it, and then with my case, it's pretty much like thanks, but no thanks. But we're keeping the money that goes towards the prize money there. And but I mean, I have gotten you know accepted as some, matter of fact, I got a, accepted for one here in Wilmington. I mean, I know Wilmington is no comparison to New York or. California or anything like that, but it was one of these galleries I went into one time. It was like that wouldn't be a bad gallery to get accepted to. And uh, you know, you know, I the guess wor- one night, dur- what the worst thing, what the worst thing is that can happen to you is you drop dead someday, and then they find all your photos and say, "What a genius!" <laughs> and then all of a sudden they start selling for like ten thousand dollars a piece, you know. And you're well, dead. As long as it goes, as long as it goes, my wife and the kids, I have no problem with that. You know, like I so. now, I now am the repositor, uh, the owner of an entire art collection uh, that I own with somebody else. It was willed to us by this very good female photographer who just never got known in her time. Who's got really did some very interesting stuff. It was more historical than. Than a lot of things. I mean, it 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 was it dealt with the tempo of the times, the zeitgeist, and uh, uh, oh, yeah. I, I don't even know where to begin with it. You know, I you know what do a gallery well, I, show? I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, you know, we're, we're thinking of doing a gallery show. She left us one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to use for what? It, as it, I can actually go out and blow it on hookers if I want to, but. Uh, she Just hoped, show them the pictures she, while you're doing it. Is she, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the Here's gallery that turned me down was called like the Chelsea Gallery, so I don't know if you're familiar with that. So maybe you might want to go over there. But no, nah, you, you remember Roger uh, Robert Maplethorpe? Yeah. yeah. I was watching. I was watching a, uh, a documentary, mm-hmm. and I think it was Gloria Allred. And Gloria, or uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Gloria Allred. It might not be her, but she was like, I knew Robert, and he gave me pictures all the time. I had stacks of his pictures before he became famous and before he died, and I had to move somewhere and I threw them all away. <laughs> yeah, didn't Maplethorpe? Uh, didn't Maplethorpe do one of my favorite uh, pieces of art, the Piss Christ? No, I don't. I think, think that did. was the. I think that was the other guy. No, that wasn't. Uh, that wasn't Maple. That wasn't Maplethorpe. No. Uh, that, that was Sermano or something. Sermano. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Well, who was the guy? Serena, I'm sure I mispronouncing the name. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll look it up. But, but he, he was like with there with Maplethorpe because he did the thing called the Piss Christ. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then Robert Maplethorpe has sort of like the stuff with. Uh, I mean, he was a wonderful photographer, 
But he took some stuff, and I mean, as much as I watch porn and all that, I'm not into gay porn except for lesbians. But it was like, you know, so male male like, lesbian, yeah, right. geez. And Andreas Serrano. <laughs> right, S- right, right. S E R R A N O. Yeah. Um, so, now, but I'm, I'm having fun with the pictures thing. I'm glad I don't have to go to where the company I used to work for and report to the old, the new sales manager they hired. I mean, that guy was just the biggest prick in the world. And it's like, I don't know how many tomorrows I have left, but you're not going to be part of them. So, <laughs> and, I like that. And, and, the, and, and the wife is, you know, not, you know, complaining for me to go get a job. So, so how, how, you know. uh, how are you supporting the family? <laughs> you mean how my wife's supporting the family? Oh, she's, yeah. she, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm doing these shows uh, and all uh, that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, I'm not gonna... you're like me. Your wife is working, right? I, I mean, I sell stuff here. I mean, I've done some shows. Unfortunately, during the hurricane that came through here, canceled a bunch of shows. That that kind of put a little monkey wrench into the works there. Mm-hmm. And but you know, I've, I've done some shows where it makes some money, it helps pay the bills and all that. I mean, I just enjoy the shows because I, you know, I, I love when the people come by and want to ask about particular pictures, yeah, but, but, the story but, behind wait, them. But wait a minute, blah, blah, blah. let's get back to the fact your wife is working and supporting the family, right? Just like my Pretty wife is so. working. Do you feel like I do, like I'm a pimp? Uh, they call him Max. I, I, I mean, I have some days where I feel like, uh, you know, maybe this isn't working out. Maybe I need to go out and sell cars or something. Well, I, get, I, I really th- don't want to sell I, there, cars because I don't want to lie to people. There are days mm-hmm. I feel guilty about not working and, and, and giving money. Well, I mean, I do make money. I do have my Social Security and my... Uh, uh, my uh, SAG after a pension and things like that. So I do contribute, but I I still wish that I could contribute like I used to, you know. And uh, it, I'm, it, a, I'm in the same I, boat with you. I, I mean, even though the you know the company I used to work for, I mean, you know, they 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 were cheap. I mean, it, it paid the insurance and paid some bills. And and, and be honest with you, I'm not really hurting that much since I've with that company there yeah mm-hmm. you know, as i said i mean i'm i'm not you know, it's not like my wife's paying all the bills you know i'm making some stuff i'm doing motorcycle restoration stuff like well, that I mean, is she, is she happy here and there is she happy to see you happy with the photography thing i mean oh she supports the hell out of me well, yeah, good. i could do it without good her. good mm-hmm. good yeah i mean she goes to shows with me she gives me advice you know at times i turn around and the ink comes in that she bought for me and I just got a new printer, and you know, ink ain't cheap for that stuff. It takes twelve cartridges. <laughs> oh, and it's like sixty dollars a cartridge there, and I'm, I'm sure what Phil has is probably a hell of a lot better than I have. But, no, mine only yeah. takes nine cartridges, and they're really? sixty what, bucks what, a cartridge. What, what do you I, have? I have a uh, Epson eight. Uh, wait a minute, Epson. It's 3800 30, 3, It's a sixty dollar cartridge. No, each yeah, cartridge yeah. is nine yeah, of 60 them. Bucks. Oh. Cost yeah. me five hundred and something bucks to change the ink. Probably oh, cost yeah. like five dollars to oh, do. Well, the, I'll tell you something. Yeah, and I got, I've got, and an, I got twelve. I, and my old copy, my old printer, took eight. Okay, which well, was this like is twenty dollars. I, I had a Canon Pro one hundred. This is getting and to be a bore. It printed this really is, good, and then is, I got a Canon Pro one thousand, which takes. Yeah, yeah, I can print up larger pictures. This is getting but to be a boring. God, this is expensive. getting to be a boring discussion. Hey, uh, how much you paying for? Sorry, ink? sorry. Sorry, but I, I but I will way. tell you, you can buy cheaper ink. Uh, not for these these. Oh uh, yes, you can. I ha- I have an Epson here, and I ha- I get I get much cheaper ink for it. Uh, yeah, this you get is... com- compatible ones there. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Th- th- this is specifically for photographs. Uh, it, yeah, mine, you mine don't spe- print anything else. Mine on specifically it. for photographs too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but Alex, if you go to my Facebook page, uh, I got my regular Facebook page, and then I got also one called Decaying Doug Photos. You see a picture you like, you tell me a P.O. box, and I will send you a copy of the picture. There. Oh, I'm up to my ass in pictures with the ones this woman took. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but thank uh, you. Yeah, that's... Thank you. I don't know where well, I no would problem. put it. I, I, our walls are filled with art right now. Some, a lot of it girlfriends, a lot of it stuff she bought over the years, so... And we have a big apartment, but uh, I don't know where we put another photograph. You know, so. Well, if you happen to see one you like, and you, you okay. just let me know, great. I'll send great. it gratis. Great. 
uh, posters and everything. So how are you doing, uh, Brian? How's your evening going tonight? Yeah, I'm just looking at this thing here. Uh, it's You want to talk about irony. Uh, saying here, uh, Scott Walker passed a, a law blocking candidates who lost by more than 1% to demand a recount. And last night, or election night, he lost by... Uh, Apparently, he lost by 1.2 percentage points. <laughs> no recount for him. No. Uh, can you see those ink cartridges? Well, I don't. We, we don't care, Phil. What's they look what like? My, they look like my ink. They look like my ink cartridges. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say versus the color drums for color laser jet. What is an inkjet of higher higher quality by virtue? Uh, uh, it allows you to 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 create more archivable. Uh, I only say that because with the color laser jet, you know, the ink never dries up and, it, you know, they don't seem to stiff you as much as, yeah. although they still do, obviously. But. Yeah, it, it seems as uh, all of the... Uh, that's uh, what I use. The photo printers use uh, inkjet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, are we through with that now? Yeah, Are I we through so. with that topic? Yawn? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No uh, more for me. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> See? He's very manageable now. He's a he's he's relaxed, Doug is. Yeah, well you know. he's uh, hey, not on the road. I, do you mind if I ask you a question? I hope it doesn't bring up a bad subject or anything. I hope it doesn't get me banned again. But your former partner in, I'm sorry? Uh, well, well, Brian you get is a banned is, the first time. Oh, the, five times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Doug got... I, listen, uh, listen I, I deserve to get banned. I was being purely over-the-top obnoxious. And so um, so I'm trying to control that. He's the only so, guy, but actually... Now, your, your former yeah. partner, Crime, that used to share the airwaves with you, uh, he seems like kind of like disappeared. Do you know anything, whatever happened, or do you want to talk about it? If you don't want to talk about it... Well, fine. I don't know who you're talking about. He's probably referring he's from to... Can he's from Canada. Oh, Revelstoke Jim. Yeah. I have no idea what's happened to him, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I go on his Facebook page, and, yeah, he, and he, he proclaims himself a public figure. Now, I knew when he was on there, he hated me. I mean, actually, the last one of the times... Oh, you know he, he hated more than... You know he hated more than you? Me. Phil. <laughs> oh, he hated Phil. Well, so, you're like... So well, I think he, I think he, I think he hated everybody except for Patrick and Miranda. I, I mean, and especially the way he treated you on his last show, and then he tried to compete against you in the same way. It's like, man, what a dick! I mean, I was banned from your show. But Doug, I, mean, I was. You know, Doug, yeah. I'd, I'd let dead dogs lie. Yeah, I would let dead dogs lie. I don't want to say anything bad about uh, about uh, Jim, and I and really, he hasn't really done anything that I know of. You know. Well, yeah, that's why I noticed, like, on, you go on and Facebook, it's, you, like, man, never post anything, but he's a public figure. And I, I feel like saying, hey, dude, you called me an asshole on minute, the air wait, there, wait, and okay, now you okay, call yourself a, a public figure. Again, let, so. the, let dead dogs lie. But okay, what, we'll all I have to say is, is that I felt that Jim did a show here in the beginning that was one of the most original, exciting pieces of Internet broadcasting I've ever heard. Okay. And as as the time went on, somehow it started to kind of get sour. Something went wrong. I don't know whether it was his health or what it was. And then eventually he kind of turned on me, you know. But uh, in the beginning, uh, I would sit here and just go to, I would call him up and say, I wish I was as good as you are. And he said, come on. No, yeah. I heard you say it all the time. You praised him all the time. Yeah, yeah. and I still, that early work, which, by the way, if you've got Roku, you can hear on Roku. We still have some of those programs archived and are running them on Roku. Uh, you, you hear some of those early shows, especially the Adventure Night shows, and they were spectacular. They were yes, just they were. spectacular, you know. And uh, well, so, yeah. I, the only, as I said, the only reason I'm saying, and I'm not, I'm not going to go deep diving into it, but what just got me was just he was a liar. As I said, when he told you to ban me because I was leaving him constant Facebook messages, insulting him and all that, I wasn't. 
I got better things to do in my life. I don't even. I don't, I don't, like I don't re- even remember all that stuff going on. He I, did. I, yeah, he did. And it's just sort of like I didn't do that. You're let a me liar. Put, let me put it this way: the only thing that I consider unfinished with Jim was I still don't know why he left. Okay, <laughs> I don't know, and I have no idea. All I know is one day he was here, and the next day he wasn't. You know. And then Miranda quit right after he did. But we've gotten along fine. This is, what, almost three years later, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's been, yeah. It's been a little while ago. But as I said, I was just kind of wondering because it seemed like Can- his whatever he was doing hasn't really taken off or anything. So. Doug, uh, I'm, I'd like to change the subject because I think this makes some people uncomfortable. Uh, what, the printers? Uh, no, no. The, <laughs> the, the gym thing. So uh, okay, anyway. No more, gym- no more for me. Jeff is on now, and Jeff has a uh, what is it, a pacemaker, and I understand that uh, there's been a uh, uh, a thing where people have been hacking uh, these uh, pacemakers and 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 so forth. And uh, now they haven't done it to anyone in the in. Uh, but how do you how do you hack a pacemaker, and what do you make it do if you hack it? Do you make it act like a liver? Well, there, there are, you know. there are certain. Uh, there's a company that has uh, these uh, pacemakers and other things. I can't remember the name of the company. It was just yesterday or this morning that I heard the news uh, about it. It was on CBSN, mm-hmm. and they were they were saying that these hackers have been able to hack uh, medical devices, and uh, because many of them were designed 20 years ago when hacking mm-hmm. wasn't a issue uh it's it's putting certain things at risk and one of the medical device companies uh, i'll probably have to uh, uh look it up but it was one that i think you had mentioned in the past well turn uh, on you're, your you're mic. muted you're uh, muted jeff. you're muted jeff uh, unmute yourself yeah yeah uh, was it uh medtronic or uh, it, it might have been scientific no I, I don't think it was boston scientific i think it was medtronic yeah uh, Medtronic is is probably one of the oldest. Yeah. So right. uh, so these hackers uh, actually uh, hacked into it and, and and were able to change things. So they found the vulnerability in uh, in in these things. Yeah, but they're they're normally designed to be able to do it. Uh, for example, I had an MRI today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that if you want to have an MRI, you really have to turn your pacemaker off. Mm-hmm. So that, that's the same thing that you're asking about. Well, yeah, but you turned it off on well, purpose. I, my, <laughs> the, the nurse in the place did it, and I just sat there and watched her do it. Right. And um, it seemed like a pretty simple software change. Yeah, that, what, what, what they're saying is that there are people that out there that can turn your pacemaker yeah. off without your permission. Yeah, but my question is, forget yeah. about that, okay, yeah. uh, uh, Jeff. If suddenly somebody turns your pacemaker off, like they turn your pacemaker off when you got in the MRI machine, right? Right. What, do you feel anything? Is there anything different with your heart? Or it just hasn't no, got I, a pacemaker? I didn't notice it. In other words. I didn't notice it, but I was just. I was just laying down there anyway. I, I mean, there's no there. danger if your pacemaker stops of you dying necessarily because the pacemaker has stopped. I mean, th- theoretically, yes. Okay. But, uh, but it didn't happen for me. And I've had it at least two times where they've shut it down for, you know, extensively, which is maybe 20 minutes or something. Okay. Like. Okay, uh, when I go to see the cardiologist, they turn it off all the time. Yeah. And they want to turn it off and turn it on and make sure it, it's fully functional. And, and they can do they that can all do. from the outside, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything. But you don't want some 400-pound guy in New Jersey doing it. You know, well, don't worry. He, on his don't bed. worry. He may be getting a job as uh, the attorney general. So uh, <laughs> he's only three seventy five. <laughs> he's not dying. Yeah, I can't believe how big he's got. I thought he had like the you know band put around the stomach there. I guess that thing must have broke. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's a band. I mean, my God, the, I mean, I mean, that ass of his probably has two zip codes. So goddamn big. Yeah. One for each chick. Hey, Who are we talking about? We're talking. Uh, we're talking about. Uh, um, have you seen Jersey hey, Governor Chris Christie? Oh, Chris Christie. Chris. 
Christie yeah, Chris Christie there. There are two people yeah, that, are being, that are being uh, that are being that are being touted as the next uh, possible nominee for AG. They both Just had meetings now. with them. One of them, of course, is Chris Christie. The other one is Rudy Giuliani. Can you think of two oh, worse no. choices? Now, there was somebody else too, and I can't recall the there name. There was a former was AG. A? Yeah, yeah, and and there was a former AG. Uh, I, I, Roth or somebody I, I don't remember they had just talked about it uh, I don't want to say like Ackworth or something like that was another one I, yeah, well, I, I those were the, sure those were the wrong, two that so. I heard but you know uh, anyway. I I don't think Christie would pass muster with a with a committee to be honest with you well the no. way he fucked over Jared Kushner's uh, dad no yeah. well, forget that forget that i mean that, that that you that that we could all cheer that he had his father arrested oh i know i agree but i'm, I'm saying but, how vindictive that administration no, is by but, proxy no but what i'm saying is he has to pass muster with with a senate committee uh or is it congressional committee in this case i think it's, it's senate senate i believe but he you know because of that whole uh bridge uh, controversy members. all of that kind of stuff he's got a little too much uh questionable behavior in his background um and and giuliani would have to absolutely recuse himself because of all the things that he said defending him vis-a-vis russia and and that kind of thing is something you you recuse yourself from the investigation so that you can't be a part of it um but he wouldn't do that you know Uh, I see an article here. That's, not, that, that's one of Trump's requirements. Yes, is that you are not well, going to recuse yourself. And the thing is, if you've made statements like this guy, what's his name, Whitaker? What's his the current yeah, temporary AG? Yeah. He, he made a lot of comments on television where right. this thing was concerned, and that would be a reason for you to recuse yourself. You just do that. And he said he's not going to. Right, and so you know, uh, they say that uh, this, this may be a very much an illegal appointment. The, the Dems would like to see everyone recuse themselves. Well, there's eight potentials according well, no, to this article. No, no, nobody. He if he found somebody who had not made a single comment on how he felt about um, uh, the the Russia investigation, then that guy would not have to recuse himself because he had no. not made previous statements to that. Well, get Vladimir Putin did say he had nothing to do with it. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, the <laughs> eight, uh, or, uh, Chris Christie, Giuliani, Ted Cruz, Chuck Grassley, Rod Rosenstein, Chris Kobach, Ted, uh, Trey Gowdy, and Pam Bondi. Uh, Pam Bondi, I think, was the attorney general in Florida. These are a bunch of numb nuts. And she, won't, she won't pass because, I mean, Trump gave her like a big donation and then somehow she dropped you know, the case about uh, Trump University. So we're like, okay, well, let's drop it now. So I, I thought mean, that would definitely come up. I thought she was good looking. I would have given her a donation, too. Uh, good. Well, there's good, a lot of good looking good, good people repu- out there. Good Republican sexist, Phil. Attorney General. <laughs> good course, Republican sexist. sexist. Yeah. 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 Uh, have you bush. seen good, any good movies lately, Alex? Wait a minute. Don't change the subject. Do you, that's what you always I'm do. Sorry. You were on a subject, and then you change it. I was just, I know you, I know no, you're I ha- movies, no, I haven't we'll, we'll... seen, I haven't seen any good movies lately. I don't think there are any. There aren't any. Yeah, they all suck. Well, I saw that one that had Jeff Bridges, like, trouble at that, some bar or whatever, and I would recommend just wait for that thing to show up on Netflix or whatever. Yeah, I'll steal Too it. Too long, boring. I'll steal it. Uh... <laughs> exactly. Steal that motherfucker. The American way. There's some films that deserve to be stolen, you know. Anyone that dares charge you. That you can't otherwise watch on television for free anyhow it can be stolen. I can, Should be stolen. Yeah, I've given I've given a lot of money to the movie industry over the years. Okay, let me just say that. I mean, the one that I stole was I went to I went to uh, a theater to go see that last thing about uh, you, you know uh, that uh, the thing that was done by the person who did uh, Harry oh, the, Potter. Was that the Lady Gaga thing? No, the it, Harry Potter uh, oh. woman who oh. uh, she uh, wrote yeah. a movie. Uh, Skilling or uh, no, 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 but they just came out, they're just coming out with the sequel of it, but it was like creatures of something. Uh, and uh, I went to see it, and it was supposed to be in, th- it was supposed to be in 3D, and it wasn't. 
it wasn't. You talking about the I shape paid, of water? I paid 3D prices, and everybody in the theater had their 3D glasses on, and I was the only one that complained that it wasn't in 3D. And then I, I dragged the manager up to the theater and said, here, is that in 3D? And they went, no. I said, well, what are you going to do about it? And he said, we can't do anything about it. The picture's already started. <laughs> so do you want your, that was a Black do you, I said, do you, want, do you want your money back? I said, yeah. They, well, they said, do you want a ticket to a future film? And I said, not if it's projected as badly as this one. Uh, I, I said, and uh, plus the fact that, you know, I want to be able to assign my seat and all of that ahead of time, and I don't want to have to come into the theater with these passes, right? So he said, well, let me see if I can find the money. They didn't they seem to have cash around the place. Now, and, in this and, theater and, so, and so what I finally did was I stole that movie in 3D because I just said... Well, actually, I went back. We went back the next week and actually saw it in 3D. And then finally, I just stole it. Said I, I Do you have a 3D movie. TV, Alex? Yeah. And uh, then, don't make those as then, much anymore. then Black yeah, Panther, the screen was too dark and you couldn't see anything. And it wasn't just dark because the people in it were. It was dark on top of the fact that the people who in it were. And so you really couldn't see anything. Just these eyeballs running around. Right. <laughs> And uh, I call, I go down to the manager. Nobody's complaining. Nobody's complaining. And I say, uh, look at the screen. I said, um, uh, he, I, he said, well, it's, it's a dark movie. You had a special one wait, wait, because wait, wait, it was wait, all done in second. blackface. Now, hold on a second. That's why, that's right, why uh, they were no, dark. No. So then I went, I said, come to the next theater, okay, where it was playing. It was just a, about a half hour earlier. Okay, but it was playing. And we went into that theater, and I said, now look at the screen. And he went, yeah, I guess you're right. But there's nothing we can do about it because we can't restart the film. Yeah, Phil, when he said, when, when, when Alex read in the beginning credits that it was a Jolson Films Pictures production, I should have <laughs> yeah. taken him away. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah but, exactly. But I, but I, <laughs> babe. That one, when it came out, at home, uh, I found it online in 3D. I downloaded it. Fuck it. I paid good money for that film. I don't blame you. And I got this, this, just, you couldn't see the picture. It was I'm, terrible. I'm afraid to use torrents and to download stuff. You know, I don't want to no. screw up my computer. You know, I, I don't know what's what's you, going to be safe and what isn't concern. going to be safe. You've got to know what Just you're doing. I've, we'll I have never, I have never in all the time that I have downloaded stuff, uh, and I guess I'm admitting to a crime here, but it's basically it's TV. And the I have. That has happened. And the reason I do TV. Firework shit. Uh, and the reason I do TV is they got commercials in them anyway. They, they you know, they, they put these things out for free to begin with. Exactly. And I started to do it when... Um, uh, I, w I was getting lousy cable service, and it was what glitching was constantly, and I wanted to see my shows, and the only place I could see my shows is if I downloaded them illegally. Well, wasn't there a, a service out of, uh, like, Sweden or something that got, uh, they all got arrested, and then they closed it down? Uh, I, it was Ship or something. Uh, it was a, a one that was uh, quite popular, and uh, it was a torrent site. Uh, there were several of them that have been closed down from time to well, time. Well, this this one was very popular. It was starting to get used by the mainstream people like me. Well, if some uh, some of them get really well known, and other ones keep a very low profile. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so after that one uh, got taken down, I stopped using any of those. But I, you know, I usually I, uh, I you know I pay for both most of my movies, and I don't really download films that much. Uh, I was always very reluctant to. The only time I ever did it were some of these titles where I got a, I got a lousy showing of it, you know, and I felt I was owed the film, yeah, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, when you go to a movie and you pay, what is it, uh, uh, for the two of us, it comes to because we a get lot. senior tickets, and it's, if it's a 3D film at the comfy chair, it's 42 bucks. And then it cost me another 25 round trip to take a cab to the theater, what, do you then, bring your own popcorn? And, no, and then, it, you know, that's something you can't do. And that is yeah. something that's always pissed me off. You should be able to bring your own popcorn if you want to. But mm. if you brought in your own popcorn snacks, and dude. your own snacks, you got them down the street or something, 
Uh, if they notice you bringing them in, they tell you, "Sorry, you can't bring those in." Why? I, I, because I have to. Coats. Because I have to buy them from I, you. I went to a theater know, that uh, that had a Starbucks next door, and I bought uh, you know the big Starbucks with you know all of this and that and the other thing. It must have been six bucks, and so I'm drinking it, and I and I'm I, I'm going into the theater, and they said you can't bring that in. I said you don't have coffee. You know, so, you know, it's, uh, I, I drank it before I went in. Yeah, well, yeah, but they, if you come in with popcorn, they will tell you, turn around and leave. Right. That's and, what they and, told me with the Starbucks. That's why and, you wear a big pop. Well, big you know yeah, something? Popcorn was like, I think the large, when I went, it was like $10. Oh, for yeah. Stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, actually the box. And, like, and, eight, and $8 for a large drink. By the way. But you the, can get a refill the, thing, the pop, and I, I would make them refill it even if I didn't want it. The popcorn <laughs> box. The popcorn box. The popcorn is usually kind of horrible anyway. Put in the fridge right? fill or Hold something. Hold on a second. The popcorn <laughs> box Candy costs corn. them more. Than the popcorn itself. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I I would get the sweetened popcorn that I'm not supposed to have. Uh, the uh, I, I forget what they call it. It's uh, it's not regular popcorn. Caramel it's got, like, corn. No, it's like, like a candied corn. I know. Uh, it's sweet. Oh, uh, yeah. I, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll look at the AMC theater go, and go see. I don't, I don't know what movie theater Phil, you're going next to. Next time you think about doing like that again. and butter. <laughs> next time you plan on doing that again, Phil, just look in the mirror. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, but I mean, I, I I don't think you should really steal movies. I think that that's wrong, you know. And I've made it a policy not to do that, except on rare exceptions where I've decided I got ripped off by the theater, and I want to see the movie. You know? yeah, it's like going five miles over the speed limit or twenty miles over the speed limit or more. You're still going over the speed limit, as far as I'm concerned. So we disagree on this. Well, you, well, you could say you disagree, but why do you disagree? If I went like to that. a movie and I, I just got told a, you and I got a bad and I got a bad showing of that movie and I just spent forty two bucks to see that film and got a shitty presentation, why uh, shouldn't I, I download that, that thing and watch it for uh, watch it? It's not for free because I paid forty two dollars. I also told you that I that I torn too, but I torn simply for the sake that I can torn. No, and, I, you know, no, you're doing you know, the same you know, thing. You're I, taking I, advantage of the same thing. I will, I will admit that. I mean, and I tour on TV shows, but I really find I'm doing that less and less because I have like Hulu without commercials. And so yeah. most of the shows I'd want to watch on regular television, I can get that way. There's several other services that I subscribe to without commercials. So it's I time find consuming and it takes up space in your hard drive too. Yeah, so so there's a reason I find, why I rely more on Hulu now cuz I have Hulu yeah. now and Netflix. But do you have Hulu uh, without do. do you have Hulu without the commercials? Correct. Yeah, because that that's but still, you know, whether you do 5 miles over the speed limit or 20 miles, that's my reason why we disagree, by the way. This is my reason. Well, cuz I believe that if you're doing 5 or 20 miles over the speed limit or 200 miles over the speed limit, you're still going over the speed limit. Well, no, if you're going two miles and over the speed limit, if, you, if, you if you're going two miles over the speed limit, your chances of killing somebody are less than if you're going 100 miles over the speed but limit. But if a cop is being a prick or if he's pulling and a Especially all the cops that pass you without their blue on, regardless. Yeah. going way over the speed limit. Yeah. Just like a service provider would used to. Anyway. They haven't yet. Uh, let me just say to the audience do not steal movies. Uh, that is wrong. If you want to steal television shows, hey, they're free in the first place. You know, that's here's, my feeling on it. Here's today's just lesson. Go to you, it's only go cheating to you to get caught. Yeah, and, and the fact is, it's amazing how much of this stuff, pi, pi, literally pirated old TV shows, okay, yeah. are on YouTube. Are on YouTube. Yeah. And, YouTube. and music. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but all I'm saying is, is that, uh, uh, um, you know, with the TV shows, um they don't make them that available to you after the fact. Although there yeah. are ways you can do it now. If you've got, uh, you can get uh, the CW oh. online and you can get Fox online and you can get a lot of these networks online and you can watch the shows there. You have to watch them with commercials because as opposed to when you do them on your DVR, you can't speed through the commercials if they're online. Uh but uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's certainly there are a lot of ways you can do it without pirating. So that's all I'm saying. And I'm, I'm joking about the, the amount to which I pirate or take torrents and so on. 
kettle corn. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's kettle corn. It's amazing how things come out of context all of a sudden. Kettle corn. <laughs> Yeah, Orville Rod Redenbacher's kettle corn. Yeah, I can get it, it at the AMC it, theater. It, it's not. Uh, they. I don't know if they add that much sugar to kettle corn. What do they do to kettle corn? It's a little I don't different. Know, enough. But it's sweeter. I don't. Than I don't like it. <laughs> sweeter. It, it. It's sweeter, but it. It isn't. It isn't like caramel corn sweet. Right. Yeah. It yeah. just. It just has a hint of sugar on it. Yeah. And that's why I don't like it, because it's one of those things in my brain. Popcorn is either supposed to be salty or buttery, and that's it. Yeah. Well, I like the kettle both, corn. Both. Yeah. Buttery and salty. Yeah. Yeah. And hot. Oh, right. It, it, all of that. But And so in my brain, when, when I've had kettle corn, it just, it, it sends a signal like, well, this is fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, what I love is at the theaters, they, they don't serve butter. Sure. They serve butter flavoring. Yeah. They don't serve butter. And uh, I like popcorn with butter, but the girlfriend absolutely will not eat it with that substance, that Pennzoil that, that comes from a pump at the movie theater. Well, that's interesting because Cavanaugh likes beer. You like butter and he likes beer. Why'd you have to bring up Cavanaugh? Do you want to ruin my fucking day? Of course. And uh, you know Ruth Bader he also Ginsburg. Likes gagged pussy. Uh, uh, you say Trump. any, you make any joke about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and I'm, I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna punch you well, through the, the internet. Do you know, do you know how she got hurt? She fell down. No, oh, Trump pushed her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hope you're doing all right, Patrick. You could hear a pin drop. Yeah, you could hear a pin <laughs> yeah. drop on there. Cr- I think he liked it. Crickets were chirping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you liked it because you're the only one smiling. You're really. the only yeah, one no, smiling. you were all smiling. No, uh, we weren't you, smiling. You just you're, could imagine. Your, I was smiling at Alex's in, reaction. Is what I was smiling at. In your yeah. imagination, Phil, was I smiling yeah. anybody? I don't yeah, think so. That's why I was laugh. smiling at you, Alex. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was laughing. Huh? Your reaction was on the inside, Alex. Restless. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, he couldn't believe I said it. That's why. <laughs> the, she's gonna be fine though, right? And that's yeah, you yeah, DV- yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, she's it, got right. a, a bruised rib. She no broken ribs. No, nah, she has broken ribs. Last five more years. years. Yeah, yeah. but that's easily taken care of. Yes, uh, Patrick. Christ. I I need to derail this whole thing because I was busy with something else. Why are you not at the theater? Oh, uh, <laughs> because the. Show has been was canceled, but we didn't find out till today it was canceled last week. Oh, and I saw your post again today. Yeah, and just reminded me that Jack was going to be on. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll be on with Jack for like three hours then, and then I ended up getting busy with something, and then you know I came on late here, and I heard you, and then I'm thinking maybe Jack didn't do it. It's a rerun, and then it was. You were talking about current events, so I just was curious. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like the reason that he found out that it uh, it was not showing is that they had a two drink minimum, and he wanted to know if uh, he could get around that. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, no. It wasn't a matter of getting around it. Well, you didn't but, want to have to no. Drink the, the two the, this was a place that is actually it's a theater, but it's also a nightclub. And uh, it uh, it served uh, it has a two drink minimum, but we didn't know if we had to pay a two drink minimum since we were paying for the uh, for the tickets, which were eighty five bucks a piece, and we didn't think you know they should. And so she just what called, show was that? Oh, I don't want to go into it again. Uh, but uh, she she went into. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? She 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 asked him about it and phoned up to ask him about it and they said no, the show was closed last week and then she looked to check and her credit card the money had already come back to the credit card but nobody got a hold of us nobody said that she, we could have gone down there and they would you know it was well, uh, sorry. what's showing what what is actually showing tonight I don't know what's there I have no idea yeah. I, we didn't go I down mean, there to find out ticket. I mean, it must be some show yeah yeah. Yeah, so apparently it was a failure of a show because you know, at eighty-five bucks a ticket, they should have been making money. Anyway, 
Well, fortunately for me, I, I went and saw a concert. I haven't, I haven't been to a concert in decades. Last real concert I went to was Ramones when Dee Dee was still alive. Mm-hmm. That was back in the eighties, and a friend of ours gave us some tickets to go see George Thorogood mm-hmm. about three weeks ago, mm-hmm. and went to it and just great show. But it's funny when you watch like some of these older groups and you watch the audience and they all look like they're all grandmas and grandpas, which I do too. It's sort of like. Oh boy, here I am and part of that crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they then when they wear tie dye shirts along with uh, being in that crowd, <laughs> there were some. Yeah, there were some with tie dye shirts and bald people with uh, uh, what we call it? ponytails. Mm. Yeah, a lot of that. It's like it's like, dude, you're bald. You know, accept it. You know, nobody's going to think you have long hair because you have a ponytail. Right, right. But he put on a good show. That it was really good to go see him and. And there were actually those were like eighty dollar tickets that the guy gave us there, and I was like, "Well, well, thank you very much." So, yeah. So anyway, good to have friends. Um. Anyway. Um. So. Um. Uh. Let me see here. So that's what happened with the theater. Uh. Um. We didn't. Uh, we didn't go. And so I. I. I made the decision. I. I called up Jack and I said, "Do you want to?" If you're looking forward, if you're looking towards doing the show tonight, uh, you're welcome to still do it, you know. And he said, "Well, I had a bad night last night, and if you can do it, I'd be, you know, be I'd be happy if you did it." And so I said, "Okay, I'll do it," you know. And uh, that's why I'm here tonight. Uh, uh, and I'm just as glad because I don't know if I could just sit here around the house with the show going on and me not doing it, you know. It would so kind of Jack's change. not on tonight. So you know, Jack's on at midnight. Later. At midnight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but he was going to do three hours tonight, my, my show and then his show. So, you know. Anyway. Yeah, I, I was wondering how uh, you were able to put Steve Pearl, how he would have been able to put the Steve Pearl thing on. Uh, and I'm he, saying, wouldn't, oh, he wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have. That's yeah. why, uh, you know, I'm listening and I'm saying. Oh, I see. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hello, Kevin. How are you? Good evening. How are you doing? Fine. So listen, uh, in the news, um, um, uh, uh, to begin with, uh, let's, uh, let's go back to that press conference yesterday. Um, that was just horrendous. Uh, the more I look at it, um, mm. the most embarrassing act by a president I've ever seen in the history of the United why, States why, of America. Why, because he was uh, keeping the intern from being uh, pushed over oh, by, uh, I, I'm, by I'm, an aggressive I'm news person? I'm sorry, I knew you were going to bring that up, <laughs> Phil, and I did something just for you. You know, Corey Lewandowski uh, took a lot of heat uh, just because he brushed by somebody. Wait a minute, know? hold on a second. I'm going to show the people the picture. This is all that went on. He barely touched her arm. Okay, see yeah. that? Folks? I didn't think he touched her at all, that she touched him. Well, she touched yeah, him. No, no, he he touched wait him. a minute. Wait a minute. Now, hold on a second. If you look at the photo, Phil, which well, it'll gotta, probably, be com- go to YouTube, it'll probably be coming yeah. up on YouTube shortly. Um, uh, she is doing more pushing than he is. He, touched, he simply touched her arm briefly to prevent her from pushing on his arm. Uh, but uh, he that was hard, that was more a brush than it was anything else. And I don't know what video you've seen of it, Phil, but what you probably saw was the edited version by Alex Jones. Yeah. No, I saw the truthful well, version. No, the Alex No, the Alex Jones version oh, is yeah. the version. Yeah. Wait a minute. The version that Sarah Huckabee was showing. No. Was you showing got a, you, you're off a couple of frames. No, if, I'm not. This picture it goes, is a couple of frames. That is uh, the most. After. That's the most. No, that's the early. That's the first contact. No. And wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm telling you. Yeah. I know. I did it. Okay. <laughs> I took it. And I had a choice of that or another frame that was his hand was a little bit lower. But that is the most that his hand ever touched her. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Remember, yeah. and up, I don't. And if, wanna, and if you want, and if you want to look at Sarah Huckabee, if you want to look at Sarah Huckabee's picture of it, a video of it, she took the thing from Alex Jones and Infowars. No. Okay, their edited version of it. 
you should see the video of it, not no, the still I, I, photo. Okay, well, I, I could play the video here. If you play the video, you'll see that. But uh, I, the trouble is, what I can't, what I can't do is, I can't uh, uh, go back and forth on it. It would just go by, and uh, you'd see it too yeah. fast. That is the first of about three frames that I could have taken of his hand on her shoulder, and that was it. It was only for about three frames. Yeah, no. If you would have taken well, well, uh, uh, the uh, next Phil, frame, it would have Phil, been the one Phil, where the uh, next he one, belted her across the it, uh, forehead. No, but. he didn't do anything. He just basically <laughs> she gra she grabbed him. If you notice, she's grabbing him, and he no. is simply repelling that with a slight brush oh. of his hand. Yes, Patrick, and then uh, Brian. The video we're just on, I, I've got Fox on because Shannon Green's on, and I'm getting ready to whack off to her. But anyway. They just showed the uh, the video, the the entirety of the video, and she doing her job by going to get the microphone, which makes her touch him, and he kind of well, it looked like he kind of pushed her back in that sense of don't touch me, you know, I want the microphone, and that's it. There was no. Uh, I didn't well, see he was in. He was in the. He was in. He was in the process of talking, and she tried to pull the microphone away from him. Yeah, he wasn't finished. He, was, he wasn't. The he president was, of the United States told her to. Right, it was his job, but mm -hmm. you know, do anything that would any more than any of us would have, which is just kind of pull it back because I'm not done talking, and yeah. and now. I mean, I, I think the president overreacted. I don't personally like Jim Acosta because I think he he's an arrogant fuck. But most of those tricks in there are because they get the White House passed, so they think mm -hmm. they're all God too. So I don't put him any different than the rest. But he doesn't have it anymore. Yeah, but that's bullshit. To get rid of it for an incident that really didn't do anything, and then. Him flapping his gums, you're a terrible person. It, he could have stopped at, I'm, let me be president, you run CNN, and if, if you were doing any better, you know, if you did a good job, you'd have better rating. He could have ended it there by adding you're a terrible person. He didn't do anything that was terrible. I thought it was uh, Sanders that said that. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Uh, he said it, that, it was the president that he who mistreated said mistreated Sanders. Okay, let's go. He was a, little... a terrible person. Shit. Sarah Sanders is a fucking adult, and she can yeah. handle herself, and she's shown that. That woman had more balls than most of the men that I've met to deal with things. He didn't need to say that, and he didn't need to say it in that. He could have said, you could be more respectful to her, but a terrible person, it just. That vindictive did, bullshit. Did, did they do this kind of behavior uh, during Obama's press no, conferences? No, never, never. No, because now, he wasn't honorary no. like that. Because he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't honorary no, well, like that. And his, his, press pe his press people, it was custom. his press people, his press his press people. Now he had congressmen that called him liars during the State of the Union address. Yeah, yeah. you lied, Joe Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can you lie, boy. Because that's what he was getting at. You can uh, keep uh, your... uh, but let's let's forget for a moment this incident with Acosta, although he should not lose his press credentials because the idea that anybody would lose their press credentials because the president didn't agree with the questions he was being asked. I don't think is that wrong. was the thing. It was no. his behavior no, no, uh, no. in there. It but he was, was no, you know something? Phil. You know what that it was, no. Phil? Was Phil? What that was, was, was what that was, Phil. He didn't even answer the first question. Phil, what, what that was what yeah, that was here, hold on a second. Okay, Doug. And yeah, I tell you the worst thing was Sean Hannity. Hold on a second, Doug. Doug Go. Hold on. Doug, wait a minute. <laughs> Jeez almighty, don't, Doug. Don't listen. Get yourself banned. Uh, All right. The thing that Phil fails to recognize is that the press has a job to do. And I think what you saw yesterday in that room, and I, I, like, I like what Peter Alexander did after he was through, by saying, I know Acosta. He is a respected and good reporter and uh, is not 
doing fake news or whatever. I mean, he defended him, and I thought that was terrific. Yeah. All right. And what does wait Trump say? Like, I'm uh, not but against, wait a minute. What we didn't get into is what went on later with the with mm. the black reporter from PBS. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, she she was talking uh, when somebody else had the floor. No, but finally, and, when she got on, and yeah. he she asked him a question about his term, saying that he was a nationalist, and does this not give uh, safety and refuge to uh, the the Nazi party here in America who call themselves white nationalists, he said, you're a racist. Yeah, there was a racist thing, because he's saying no, that uh, his uh, position uh, on that uh, and being Phil, a nationalist Phil, has Phil, nothing to do with race. Phil, Phil, come oh, on. Geez, Phil. You've got, this was the worst I've ever seen anybody lose his cool. I, to think that this man, has his finger on the button, the nuclear button, with that kind of temper? Yes, Eric, Patrick. Eric, 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 we've been through this before. He doesn't have his finger on the button. There's a lot of different layers before he could do anything. And I'll tell you what, even his closest sycophants that are licking his asshole, if yeah. he's on a tirade like that and said, we're going to nuke wherever they would be smart enough to say no we're not gonna or okay mr president and then go and make sure that nobody fucking does stories it. have been told that they've had to talk him down from that well you yeah know? and that that may be true and it, it and that's fine i mean at least he got intelligent people in there to talk him down. Yeah, but every, I mean, every day when he fires some of them, they're less and less there. He he doesn't have his finger on the button. He has his uh, grip on the pussy. So, you know, <laughs> that's... Uh, but then he said he had a big Again, Phil is laughing at his own jokes because somebody has to. Mm. Uh, I could use my laugh track, but I don't have it plugged in. What I was so in other words, he's doing a Michael Jackson, Phil. He's yeah, grabbing yeah. himself because he's his own biggest pussy. Then. No, no, no. It, it refers to his. Tape. See, that got a laugh. <laughs> no, I didn't see, see the that's laugh. How you, that's how you tell a joke. No, no, I didn't see any laughing. It all has to do with timing, Phil. Well, Patrick did. He cracked a smile. Yeah, no, no, no. Hey, he Alex, I, Alex, I, Alex, I got to go because I'm on this hotel phone. And I just realized I charge like outrageous rates. So I just, you yeah. know. Okay. Thanks well, for allowing not, me on. Nice talking uh, to you, Dave. Hello to you. Have a great holiday season and everybody else there. Nice and... to hear from you. I've never heard from you before. Yeah. Can I ask Doug one question that he got him on? The, uh, how come you're using that blue filter on all your photos now? A what? It, it's like a blue filter. You're, you're colorizing stuff. Oh, I'm colorizing. I mean, I'm not using any blue filter. I'm just using a standard lens there. I don't have any filters on it or anything like no, that. No, no, no. Yeah, it's just that the. Uh, the it's there called. Seems to be, in case you don't right. know, Phil, it's called color grading. Yeah, yeah I mean, I go crazy. I mean, I I put a lot of contrast in my pictures because that's what I like. You know, a lot of contrast, a lot of clarity, <laughs> stuff like that that really enhances the color. So, all right. I mean, but there's no. I'm not using. All right, enough, enough with enough with Photoshop again with <laughs> photo class. So we don't want photo class going on here. Um, that's right. Anyway, yeah, yeah uh, go on Facebook, uh, Gavin that live, and you can do that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's a group. Right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. nice talking to y'all. Y'all okay. take care. Okay. And y'all have a great See night. You, Doug. Bye bye, Doug. Bye bye. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Doug. Uh, yeah, nice to hear, hear from him. You know. He was a good boy tonight. Upon occasion, it's nice to yeah. hear from him. You know. Uh, so, anyway, um, um, uh, you know, uh, be that as it may, the fact that he lost his cool like that, it, you don't want to see that in, in a president because you want to see him be able to keep his temper and to let cool coolness reign. I mean, he, at one point, he turned around and started walking away. I mean, he was that un, unhinged. Uh, you know, a president should have a little better demeanor than that. The rest of us can be assholes. You know, he's expected to have a little dignity. But, you know, uh, let's bring up another. T oh, yes, uh, Jeff. What? I was I was going to uh, remind you that several times he said to take him take him off get him get him out of here yeah move him take him off at least he didn't say punch him <laughs> well, yeah thought he was close 
It was close. Almost. It was, it was close. And uh, I think uh, the, the press associations are asking for him to get his press credentials back. Uh, but uh, if, he, if he doesn't, here you have a president who's going to start taking away press credentials from anybody that asks him a question that might be embarrassing to answer. Okay. Um, let me bring up another topic, and this is a sad one. We had yet another gun situation yep. today. Yep. This yeah. time in Thousand Oaks, California, country bar, uh, 11 people dead, and uh, the, the uh, 12, if you include the person who did the shooting. What makes this doubly sad is that because this was a country bar, uh, a lot of the people who were in this bar were also people who were at the shooting in Las Vegas earlier. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, and it, because they, 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 it was country music again. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, you, this is, I think something like the 320th mass murder death this year. Yep. When are we going to start asking some questions here? You know, when Lane... When Chalk Wayne Parker. LaPierre gets a chunk of his skull blown off live on air when trying to stick up for NRA gun fanatics, that's when, possibly when. Yeah. That is unless, of course, he, you know, repairs his fractured skull wound and continues his speech Rain Man style on account of all the gain bramage he has sustained. Yeah. Now, my question is, I mean, what do we do about this? I mean, I, here's, here's the thing. If I had a kid and he misused his toys... I would stop him from using his toys until he learned how to use them properly. Uh, I just think it's time we start clamping down on this. It's just, it's just getting too pervasive. And, uh, you know, it's not like these are rare, isolated incidences that have been happening. And we go, oh, my God, this is terrible. This has gotten to the point where the news only devoted 15 minutes today at the top of each hour because we're so used to it happening. You know, yeah, there, were six, there were six There were six off-duty police officers, I understand, that were in that bar, and none of them had guns. Uh, you know... Uh, well, wait, wait, what does that he, have to do with it, Phil? We're well, talking the, about the, the fact... No, we're not talking case, about the, the fact... Problem, wait a minute. The we're problem not talking... Is it's a soft target. No, but we, you had the cops showing up. And one of them got yeah. killed trying to and save the first, these people. The first people, he, the first people that he walked in and saw were the security guards, and they took them out right away. And they were unarmed. No. Yes, the security guards were unarmed. Uh -huh. The uh, oh, CHP officer. Regardless, oh, if the they sheriff, were unarmed, the they yeah, probably the would have been taken out anyway. Yeah, the sheriff's officer. The sheriff's officer that showed up, a uh, 29 year veteran, he. Uh, was shot, and uh, you know, as soon as he entered the, the premises. Now, this guy was uh, military trained. He yes, so in, I mean, right. that, but with but all yeah. of that, I, he didn't manage to take the guy out, did he? Right. And no, 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 not the cop. I'm talking about the per the the uh, shooter was you know military trained. I don't know why he so, did it. He so, so, so was end. this uh, this uh, policeman? Uh, well, no, the policeman. The policeman. Was, uh, yes, he was. He was a sheriff. He was yeah. He trained. was a sheriff. He was trained. No, but, the guy, but I think the he had shooter, also had time in the service as well. I know, but the shooter was a, a recent. Uh, 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 he was a marine. Okay, and, so uh, what are you saying, Phil? We train our murderers now. Well, uh, this guy was trained, and he went off the yeah, deep we end. Do, actually. And, yeah, we, we and, no, they yeah. they don't go off the deep end, Phil. The problem is we haven't learned how to create a turnoff switch. We send them out there. there. Wait a minute. Hold on. Listen to me. We send them out there. We tell them you got to kill the enemy. And so all they do is to kill the enemy and they kill the enemy and they kill the enemy. Now they come home and nobody says, oh, now uh, that behavior is not right now. And there's no I, off switch. That's it's the gotta problem. It's got to be something else, Alex. No, it isn't. Why. No, it isn't. Uh, no, don't give, me, don't give me. Don't give you me. You had guys that were in some of the bloodiest battles that ever existed yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, to, 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 to modern man. And these people came back, got jobs, and weren't killing they everybody. They didn't kill with the same lethality as the equipment that they are armed with when they go to Afghanistan today. They, were, they had rifles that had one bullet at a time. 
the, the you know some of these guys no, i mean they Phil. were in battles where there was you know you can't uh, you can't look at those battles and not say that they were uh, they should have had ptsd and didn't. yes uh patrick um i i do have to tell you alec you're wrong world war ii they had tommy gun they had very similar equipment to what we have now um a lot of the guns were very similar to m16 you have 50 caliber machine guns you had hand grenade you had flamethrowers some of the worst shit that ever happened happened in the pacific where you had guys with flamethrowers going after the japanese um it, it, there's no difference in war the difference is when they come home and my grandpa was right in the middle of the shit in burma and he came home and got a job and went on with life. There was there was something different in that generation mm -hmm. than what happened in Vietnam and what happened now. And even in Vietnam, there wasn't as many people coming out of Vietnam shooting up bars and 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 uh, doing doing these kinds of things. It's this Iraq uh, Afghanistan war that seems to have created. Uh, more uh, of this type of behavior. And I don't know well, why. Well, to begin I with, most of why. the people, most of the people who have gone into these places and killed other people uh, have, were not in the military. Okay? So, so you, the theory is only uh, applicable to this particular situation. Well, then most of them were playing uh, uh, these uh, video games that... Uh, no, video uh, games. You know. I play video games all the time, Phil. Yeah. Where I shoot That's... people like crazy. I'm, I'm killing pixels, all right? And I yeah, know that, yeah. and most people who are playing... So you know the difference between reality and, absolutely, and a video game. Absolutely, and so do kids. But there's a lot of and, people that don't. No, there have been new reports now, medical studies, that have shown that video games have no impact on somebody yeah. being violent. They don't. Okay. Speaking as someone who's played games since he was, Christ, five, six, or seven years old. <laughs> if anybody was going to go out and take out a neighborhood, it'd be Brian. Yes, yeah, Jeff. <laughs> well, you said Tony, too. So. Yeah. In addition to uh, Patrick's, uh, was that your father or your grandfather? Grandpa. World War II? Grandpa. Yeah. Uh, my uh, first wife's uh, uh, dad was in World War II, and he came back with all kinds of mental, medical uh, and then psychological problems yeah, yeah. forever. I hear that. For his whole life. I knew people. I knew, I knew we had a neighbor. Up, he didn't kill anybody, but right. he could. We had a neighbor up the hill uh, who was a very well-known, one of the very well-known California photographer, very famous photographer. And he had been a photographer during World War II for the Army. And he was so damaged by the war that one uh, Fourth of July, we started blowing off firecrackers, and he was hiding under the bed. Okay, yeah. uh, he had shell shock well yeah. into the time, and this was five, ten years, twelve, five, six, seven years after the war was over. But he didn't grab his camera and go shoot a bunch of people, you know. No, uh, but he still had. But he uh, still. But he was terrified for his life because it brought back psychedelic uh, I, episodes from his past. That's oh yeah. That's why they have on Facebook memes uh, and whatnot. That a say, lot of don't a lot set of, off fireworks because it's it. it, it Right. Disturbs uh, a lot of Vietnam people. veterans. A lot of Vietnam veterans had that same thing, but they weren't grabbing uh, rifles and pistols and going in and shooting up everybody. Well, but, you know? but you're you're bringing this up. This is the only case where we've had somebody with PTSD. Not, I don't think I don't think it's PTSD. the only case. No, uh, name another one, Phil. No, I can't name do another it right one. Off no, you the can't bat. because they weren't. All right, I'll look it up. No, you. Okay, oh, something. good. Well, at least it'll keep him busy, and we can do other stuff. I have stuff. to say something about this. Yes, Brian. What I have to say is a what a reiteration of what I said, and you know what I said. But also, um, unless it, my my whole notion, I would never was a big fireworks person. I always find that people that are into them are kind of like chicken-hearted pyromaniacs. That having been said, however, if uh, it it should be policy. Well, I think it's a very that, brave that, person who risks their fingers. Okay. Exactly. It's, it, it should be policy that unless it's like a public venue, a concert or something where it's organized and, you know, everything is strategically placed and, you know, well planned in advance, you shouldn't be allowed to have them. What? 
fireworks? Fireworks. Well, I this that was a minor Your part of this. Inn in a neighborhood yep. where my ears or uh, better yet okay or, all right, all right. But that, that, that was a minor part of uh, that end. that was not the point i was trying to make brian the point i was trying to make is this guy was shell-shocked and yeah. i and i never heard of that kind of thing as a kid and after that i never blew off another firework again in my neighborhood a lot of things that people yeah. weren't aware of 60 years ago that they were more cognitively but all, aware all, all, of today. I'm, all i'm saying is is that that it, it, the big question is what are we going to do about this? You know, and uh, Patrick has always been uh, for the use of the ability for people to bear arms, as it were. I'm just asking, what do we do as about it? How do we start? Uh, how do we start bringing the temperature down on this deal? Because there are far too many people who have been killed this year. But this, I think owning a firearm should be as responsible. Oh, here, as, Phil know, has, owning a car. Phil has found one. Uh, We're getting a I license. Actually, I found forty-three. Oh, no, no. 43 says, what? 43 of the worst mass killings since 1984 have been in the United States military. So these are people that are in the military, like that guy uh, at Fort Hood and, and so forth. But that, they, No, uh, but these are in the military. These were people who were on bases at the time. Yeah, and no, and I asked you. Killings. I asked you for people who went out and did mass killings, like of churches and of nightclubs and of concerts and things like that, that were uh, uh, were uh, had PTSD. Okay, and you didn't come up with that figure. You came up with something. Uh, that, here's one. Uh, this is the headline. Of course, US there's going to be more killing. It's going to be more veterans. killing on military bases because that's where no, the fucking another guns one. are. You know, yes, Patrick. I was going to say, Phil, don't, don't, don't mean nothing because we go back to me lie, where yeah. where we were killing innocent people in a village. I mean, that I, I don't think that, that that's necessary to keep going back to find forty military related. You know, I mean, it it just go back to the civilian world and leave it there. Yeah. All, All right. right, I'll do that for you. Yeah, and you probably won't find any. Yeah, uh, I'm sure I'll find them. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that that mass murderer Alex Bennett. He was in the military, wasn't he? Oh, wow. Uh, yes, Jeff. In Vietnam, uh, if you were shot three times, mm -hmm. you were sent home. Yeah. If you were in, shot in three box. times, you mean you had to be shot three times and, and not be killed any of those three times. Hello, Bree. How are you? Hello. Now, where are, where are you now? I, I've, I, I've ceased to say, are you in <laughs> Dubai? Because you're, you're, you're a world traveler. Where are you tonight? That's right. I'm in Dubai. You're in Dubai. Okay, he's back yeah. there with the Burj, Burj Khalifa, <laughs> which I have on my uh, Apple TV as one of my screensavers, is a nighttime view of the Burj Khalifa. That is a oh, one. Nice. That is one beautiful fucking building. Oh yeah. yeah, I never get tired of seeing it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, in fact, uh, Dubai looks like the ultimate city of the future in its architecture and everything it else. Really. Uh, I heard something in the news that uh, the Saudis were uh, creating some difficulty uh, for D Dubai and some of the other uh, uh, nice. uh, countries. Look uh, at that. What was it? Um, where did they just invade uh, the, that they're bombing? He's not, he's not listening to you. He's showing oh. us pictures of yeah. Dubai. That was from last night. I walk around the marina. Mm. Um, I'm you mean the Yemeni situation? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were also saying that the Saudis were creating some sort of havoc in Dubai as well. Are they? Um, not that I'm aware of. Oh, hmm. I, I, you know, it was something I heard in passing. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, no, I don't. But anyway, I mean, the, the, the question is, and let's get back to that major question, and that is, what do we do about it? How do we bring down the temperature? How, you know, I mean, uh, this is getting to be all too frequent. And, and usually it's people who are suicidal to begin with who do these actions. So, you know, how, where do, how do we stop it? How do we, what do we do to prevent it? What is it in our society that causes this to happen and not to happen, say, in Canada to any appreciable extent? 
they're not as mentally ill as the uh, U.S. citizens. I think you're probably right. You know, um, it's just that I. That know, we can agree on. It, 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 yes, uh, Patrick. I think one of the things, and it, just to go back to the veterans, is I, I think we need to make seeking mental health counseling less of a stigma, and it it becoming less of a stigma because our VAs and and that are taking care of our veterans better than they have with PTSD, but I think it has to be for the rest of society as well, that if somebody is going and they're seeking help for depression or something like that, mm -hmm. it should not be uh, held against them or some sort of a stigma, because they should be lauded for seeking help to, you know, make their life better, and I, I think you know, like you said, a lot of these people have been suicidal, and they may feel that going for help shows that they're less of a person or that they're weaker or or whatever. And and that needs to somehow that needs to be turned around. I'm not sure that these people understand that they need help. I think it's incumbent on the people around them to recognize yeah. that they need uh, help. Also, I think, and, and I, I, think, I think the problem here, Patrick, is, and it, it goes to what I was saying before, that most of these aren't military guys. Uh, so in the military, yeah, they could do more to take care of people with PTSD and, and to not make it uh, horrible to say, hey, I've got a problem. These other people didn't probably think they had a problem. They probably oh, thought they were justified bullying. in what... No, forget about bullying. It's had nothing to do with bullying. Phil. Well, a lot of people uh, acted out because of bullying, uh, especially in the schools. I don't know that that's a cause of this. I mean, what we... I'll tell you, uh, I think there's a sense of permission out there today for, to, to go after racial groups, to go after Jews, you uh, know. Bree's got his hand up. Go after gays. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, Bree. Well, yeah, Alex, I was just thinking the other day, you know, when I heard this uh, report, Thousand Oaks is actually, um, I know it well because it's where Sage Publishing is. Mm -hmm. Sage Publishing is a very big academic um, publisher. Mm -hmm. And so every time I cite, you know, one of their books, I have to write Thousand Oaks, California. So when I heard that, it immediately went up. But it just, it, it's almost to the point where it's like you could have, a cable news channel just for daily shootings like here and here's our daily yeah. shooting today in the u.s yeah I mean, and really does it affect i mean does it phase anyone anymore there will be another one in the next few days for sure or the next week you know so at what point do we do something about it um, well it's so bad I, it, it's so bad Bree, that it, we have had 300 uh, something like 320 deaths since the beginning of the year in mass shootings, not just in shootings of one person. I thought there was 320 mass, uh, 320 shootings. No, mass, or from ma mass, in, mass, uh, shootings. mass shootings. This would be, they described it as four people or more. Well, mm. hell, it's been, what, 11 days or whatever since the last one. Yeah. Yeah, well, you had the synagogue. Uh, you had uh, a 7-Eleven or something. Uh, there was a, a, another one, uh, and then and now this one. Yeah. So and I it's mean, it's a combination of factors. You know, it's a combination of factors, as we all know. And I, I would add in there, sort of hypermasculinity as uh -huh. represented in media. Toxic masculinity. Um, yeah, and you know, so there's a lot going on. Well, I mean, well, how and about, in any given situation, ultimately it has to be mental illness or how, chemical imbalance. Yeah. How, really, Bree, do you see any relation between uh, violent video games and 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 these shootings? Well, you know what's funny is is that a lot of times the NRA or you know the gun manufacturers will point to the video games and they'll say, "Oh, it's the video games." Actually, they're two peas in a pod. If you look at the uh, the video games, they actually consult with. The weapons manufacturers to make sure that the weapons are exactly uh, branded and that they do exactly what they're supposed to do. So there, there's no difference between the gun uh, companies and the video game manufacturers. So, so you're saying it's product placement? 
uh, that the video games oh. are using product placement? Uh, I'm not yeah. saying. But it. Phil, it Phil, 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 studies. Look in the Re games. Recent studies. There was a recent study that came out a few weeks ago that said there was no correlation between video games and this kind of violence. Okay. Uh, you can Plain find studies that'll tell no, you. No, no, you no. Hear. But this mm. has been. This was an. <laughs> yeah, you should know. This was an empirical yeah. study, yeah, because you'll pull a study out of your ass that nobody even heard of. Well, yes, Patrick. I, I think your study came out of the a, ass. A video game can contribute. It can contribute, but again. Yeah, if you're you mentally know, unstable to begin with, I agree. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. All right. I mean, when I was a kid, I played Army. I played all of that. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean... You know, I, there was an incident where one of my neighbors, she didn't like us playing army on the side of the yard by her house. And I was in the middle of stabbing a friend of mine. And she came over and she asked me not to do that. I said, okay. And I pulled out a forty-five and I put it to his head and I pulled the trigger and I said, okay, now I'm not stabbing him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> killed anybody i've never pulled a gun on anybody right it, it, it part of it is the way i was raised and i i do think mental health has a lot to do with it and that's what i was saying earlier that it needs to be less of a stigma and you're right i forgot to add in the point that you and phil both made a lot of these people may not know that they need the help and they the family members or friends need to be able to get them to a facility but something more than a three-day and then they can check themselves out sort of thing well that that's well, just well, for wait, observation. Wait, wait, hold on a second that's... also also when it comes to violence and video games uh most of these people are not would uh, had no record uh, of playing video games they were uh, they were adults uh, they were not kids. The only ones that you could actually, the original one back in uh, Columbine, uh, Columbine, Columbine kids. you might say those oh, kids. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. Yeah, might have been influenced by video games. But most of these people, uh, the one, the guy who went into well, the synagogue, the guy who killed uh, how many people in Las Vegas? That was the yeah. biggest mass shooting practically of all time. Uh, no video games involved in that. Well, you know, well, we, we just didn't theory. like country Why music. don't we say that maybe you're uh, going ahead and touting guns like crazy and, 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 and uh, wanting the availability of them does contribute, Phil, but you'll never admit that. No, because these mentally ill people usually uh, right, think twice. Right. If, well, uh, if they don't know that uh, people are armed, and uh, not everybody has to be armed, but if they could be, then that wouldn't uh, stop they think them. Twice that wouldn't have stopped go, them, Phil. Bully Phil, doesn't... that wouldn't have stopped them. You're full of crap. That wouldn't have stopped you... them. Well, I think it would. No, it wouldn't. You know why it wouldn't? Because these people, what? on top of everything else, are suicidal. So they don't give a shit if somebody has a gun in these places. Good. Then they'll they'll no, give Phil, their wish. Phil, uh, you know. The I mean, last one in Kelly you know, didn't they? They got a lot of people who had guns there. Uh, which which one was that? The uh, which one was that? Uh, what was it yesterday? Yeah. No, no, no one had a gun there. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, there were six off-duty cops there that didn't have guns on them. Wasn't there a gun at the school in Florida and the the guard? Uh, yeah, the guard yeah, ran away. Yeah, yeah, ran away. So I mean, what what good did a gun do there? Yeah, but the cop who the sheriff who went in yesterday uh, or this morning, uh, yeah, last night. Uh, that guy went in, he followed the protocol, he got killed, but uh, that was what they train you to do, is, is to go in and, and, and confront. Uh, the guy in uh, Florida, uh, he, he ran away. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. shit. But actually, he used the old training, which was to establish a perimeter and, and wait for SWAT. And this, but, this uh, cop, um, and, and, and I have to laud him for the hero that he is before I say this, but this cop even though he was armed and took his gun out and was ready to go in and shoot the bad guy. Drained and all of that. He, he drained and all of that, got killed, okay? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, does a gun necessarily help? No, these guys want to commit suicide in the first place. Listen, we're running out of time here. Yeah, isn't it ironic that it's country music that has these mass shootings and not like people listening to uh, gangster rap? Well, uh, no, uh, no, yeah. that, no. In, in that case, in that case, in that case, the people doing the people get doing the gangster rap get killed. 
Uh, so you know, they kill each other. They kill each other. Yeah. It's a different, it's a different, c- different somehow. culture. And you hey, know listen, how they kill thank each you, other? Phil. They trip over their pants. <laughs> probably... Yeah, run away. Oh, don't laugh at that, Brian. <laughs> so <laughs> fucking racist. I, I, I Phil, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Kevin. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Brian. Thank you, Patrick. Always appreciate oh, yeah, you. And Bree, thank you so much. Everybody, a big wave goodbye. Okay, there they go. Ah, yes. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, that's our uh, that's our uh, that's our uh, uh, that's our citizens panel for tonight. Let me turn off all the uh, citizens panel stuff so the next show, which is Jack Bishop and the intersection, can use it uh, tonight at uh, uh, one o'clock in the morning. It's connections coming to you out, out of Florida, and then uh, tomorrow night at nine thirty, it's Damian Chaplin and the Exchange, and that will be followed by me once again. 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.